everyone. This is Andrea. Thank you for coming to the Wake and Thriving podcast. We have with us today, Dr. Lasell Lewis. <laughs> she is a doctorate of chiropractor and she is an experienced birth doula of over 20 natural births. So hi, Dr. Lewis. We Hello. talked a little bit beforehand. So um, tell me a little bit about um, just the birth doula and then moving into chiropractor. Like how, tell me about that. Cause I was reading about your biography about that. I'm like, there's, there's something more to this. Like I, I want to know a little bit more about that part. Well, first of all, thank you for having me. Um, so it's a little, it was chiropractic first. The oh. way that I got into chiropractic was I had um, a very stressful lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And what started the shift into like a very natural, lower stress or lower anxiety type of lifestyle was chiropractic. Um, I found a chiropractor down where I was from in San Diego that explained to me the nervous system and how every single function in my body was contributed by the central nervous system. And he made it really clear that your body has the power to basically heal itself and to function without any need for medication, without need for, for surgery. So mm -hmm. he introduced me to that very natural lifestyle. Once I was already in chiropractic school, one of my awesome mentors, Dr. Lindsay Matthews, she owned a company or owns a company called BirthFit. Mm -hmm. And what she really helped me understand is the woman's body is created to get pregnant and to give birth naturally. And, you know, some people need a little bit of help. And that is where a doula can be really, really helpful because there are, uh, there are ways to bring pain level down. There are pr ways to open up the pelvis. There are ways to have a natural birth, uh, a little bit more smooth and a doula really, uh, helps execute that. Okay, is a doula like a mid a midwife? It's um they work together really well. A midwife has to be a certified midwife or a nurse practitioner midwife. They go through a very extensive schooling for that. But a doula is, uh, there are different types of doula. So I'm a very hands-on doula. Mm -hmm. um, I help during labor. I help during delivery. But to actually catch the baby when the ba baby actually is being birthed, a midwife or a OB would do that. Or, you know, um, if, if uh, the father wants to catch the baby, him, you know? <laughs> yeah, definitely. They're like, oh, I caught you. So when you, for, for being a chiropractor, does that help with being a doula as well? Like just seeing how the body anatomy and all that works? Yeah, definitely. So I think that's what makes me a unique doula is that yeah. my understanding of the pelvis and uh, the actual growing of the baby in your, in your abdomen, it really my chiropractic background is what helps helps me facilitate so well as a doula. So your pelvis gets sounds silly that I'm saying this because I am a mom, but <laughs> your hips grow larger after a birth and they never fully go back to normal. They're just larger. Is that right? Or am I just thinking we just gain weight and don't realize it and just keep it off? Well, they they expand. So okay. that hormone relaxin is, uh, it, it starts to uh, heighten when you're pregnant and mm -hmm. then that relaxin gets really, really high when you're about to give birth. And that's what allows your pelvis to open up. So mm -hmm. you're right, some people after they give birth, their pelvis will kind of come back to where it was, but not everybody's does. Sometimes it stays a little bit separate. That's when some women start having uh, like instability issues in their pelvis this or whatever it could happen. Um, but also you're definitely right. You do gain weight in certain areas that now, now that your hormones have been exposed in the way that they have, sometimes that weight will just stay there. Mm, okay. And do you, do pregnant people, can they have, see chiropractors? Yes, definitely. Yeah. So I see a lot of pregnant women uh, as their chiropractor or uh, as almost like a, a as a 
as a dual, yes, yes. So when a I'm dual a dual, dual, I also adjust them. Um, and the major reason you want to get adjusted by a chiropractor when you're pregnant mm -hmm. is uh, you do have control over what your pelvis does while you're pregnant. So, for example, a lot of women have, you know, lower back pain while they're pregnant. Yes. Well, why is that happening? It's it, yes, there's a baby growing in you, and that makes it hard to, you know, to carry that new new space in your pelvis. Mm -hmm. But also, if your bones are misaligned before you were pregnant or while you're pregnant you can still be getting adjusted and that will actually help help you in the in the birthing process it'll help oh. to open up the pelvis it'll make the baby come down uh, more smoothly so it's very very helpful that's that's great i've never even thought to see a chiropractor while pregnant but now that you think about it all the aches and pains that we just live with while we're pregnant right. we get some relief so yeah. I'm going to a chiropractor. Okay. Definitely. And the adjustment is different. So the way that you would get adjusted when you're pregnant is different from the way you would get adjusted when you're not. It's more gentle when you're pregnant. Okay. So, cause I can't imagine we are laying, cause I've gotten <laughs> adjusted a few times. Mm -hmm. You do some interesting poses on the table sometimes. And right. Right. It's called Webster technique for when the patient is pregnant. And it's, it's honestly, it's very soothing. I mean, it's much more like a massage feeling, but you're still able to move the bones as an adjustment because of that relaxin that we were talking about. Your, mm. The mom's body becomes so much more um, malleable, more flexible in a way. It just oh. needs a little bit of help sometimes by your chiropractor or by your doula. <laughs> Okay. And then how often, like, so when somebody comes in for a visit, how often mm -hmm. do they usually come back or does it change with each individual and why they're in? I'm assuming like people that come in for car accident versus just wellness adjustments, it'd be a mm -hmm. different amount of sessions. Do you um, right. have like a standard that you usually give or... Can you tell me a little bit more? That's a good point. Uh, everybody is so different. Everybody's needs are so different. Um, I would say there's a there's a first phase, and that first phase, let's I, I like to call it the scar tissue phase. Um, you almost need more more attention, more adjustments during that first phase, mm, okay. and then. A second phase you could call the posture phase. That's when you're really getting um, a change, a visual change in what your posture looks like. That's um, fewer adjustments, but you know, it's still a pretty consistent. And then in this third phase, I call it the strengthening phase. That's when, okay, now your bones are in the right place. Your posture is doing great. Now, how can we help stabilize your muscles so that those bones don't keep misaligning? Um, so okay. over that course of time, you would see your chiropractor during uh, you know, different frequencies. Mm -hmm. But I think for me and my recommendations with my patients, that first month, I want to see you pretty often because that's okay. when a lot of change is happening. Yeah, definitely. So a few times a week for like four, four weeks or so. Right, right. Um, especially because your body, since it is a self-healing mechanism, mm -hmm. it it wants to go back to the patterns that it's created over time. Let's say, you know, you're a gymnast your whole life, and so your body has this pattern that it's been following. Maybe those include injuries. Well, yeah. now that you're getting adjusted by a chiropractor, your body wants to go back to that same pattern, even yeah. though even though you're getting adjusted. It's like we have to keep rechecking the spine, keep getting it readjusted so that you can create this new pattern, this new healthier pattern. Okay. So once, when a, say a new patient came in and they've never been to you before, what can they expect mm -hmm. from like their first initial visit for, with you? What would you right. really do with them? At my office, uh, thank goodness, we have an x-ray machine. So usually the first appointment, it's your examination, your consultation. I want to know exactly what's going on. Uh, we also do a palpation of your spine. So I use my hands to see what I can feel uh, just, just off of that palpation. But the last step is to get x-rays taken. And it's kind of like when you go to the dentist, you can be like, well, my tooth hurts. It's this one. Well, they still need to take x-rays of that tooth to see, you know, where's that cavity? Same thing with me. It's like, 
you can tell me, you know, it's right here in your neck, but I still want to take x-rays so okay. I can see exactly what's going on from the inside because a lot of people don't get spinal x-rays and it's very telling. It, it gives me a lot of information. Can you like, because you've been a chiropractor for a while, look at people and you're like, they're, they probably need to be adjusted. You're like looking at people a little bit. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, one of my good friends, we were walking the dog yesterday and um, his pelvis on the left side was <laughs> raised and his muscles on the left side were activating more. And I was really? like, oh. you're so funny. You're all looking. You're like, you, you need to come in for a visit. <laughs> yes. Yes. I was like, you need to get adjusted. You're, and he, he was like, yeah, my left side of my back has been hurting all week. I'm like, okay, well, you know where to go. <laughs> okay. That's great. I, I need to get a chiropractor friend too. <laughs> Don't you know what? We're good friends to have. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. So you, you focus on getting people off of prescription medications with your adjustments as well, right? Because I'm assuming yeah. that's um, a it's a passion of mine, definitely. Yeah, because there's a overuse of that, unfortunately, especially in fusions and in neurosurgery. <laughs> I know right? it occurs, so I do know that those patients sometimes have long term. Um, use of over-the-counter prescription medication. Very, very true. Uh, there are so many different circumstances, right? Um, I was lucky enough that I was prescribed medication, and at the time, I really needed that medication, yeah. and it helped. <clears throat> yeah. But I didn't want to be on that forever. I was only yeah. maybe 20 years old when I was first prescribed it. Thank goodness uh, I was able to do all of the natural things that I did to get off of those prescriptions. Otherwise, you know, some people get something prescribed when they're, you know, in their 20s and they end up taking it literally every day for the rest of their life. Um, yeah. And even with my patients, I've heard some really, you know, sad stories where it was like I went to whatever type of doctor. I was told I need this type of surgery or I was told I need this type of medication and neither of them really helped. And uh, I, what I wish everybody knew is that there's another option. You know, yes. drugs and surgery are super necessary yeah. sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes you have to do it, yeah. but there are other things you can try in conjunction or maybe even yes. in, in replacement of. Yeah. Like, I feel like chiropractor could work well hand in hand with like physical therapy. What are your thoughts on what do you think chiropractic would work, works well with hand in hand? Um, right. Um, a lot of, a lot of different, uh, a lot of different ailments and, you know, injuries and diseases. Chiropractic can really help with just about everything. Uh, like yeah. you name it. We really work very closely with physical therapists for sure, pain management doctors, orthopedic surgeons. Um, mm. it's, nice to, it's nice to work together also. So in my building, uh, we're in a medical plaza. There are so many great medical doctors, so many great uh, DOs that we all work together. You know, it's like, yeah. if you're really looking at a patient as a whole person in this holistic fashion, it's like there, there may be multiple factors and we can all work together. You know, it's like, um, as a chiropractor, I look at a person as their whole entire body, like not just their spine, you know, yeah. not just their injury. Yeah. Cause it, ha it has an effect on, er even though it's just your back, it's your back. It affects everything that you do. Right. Yeah. Gosh. I mean, even this picture, this is like art that we have in, in yeah. our uh, in our office, but if this is what your spine looks like. Yeah. Every nerve that travels to every organ in your body starts in your spine. Everything comes from your spinal cord, all of the, all of the nerves. So yeah. if your spinal cord is in between all of the bones in your spine, you want that thing moving properly. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> like mm, you wouldn't want that messed up. All right. So let's right. see. I have some questions. Sure. What are, what's something that you um, think people seem to misunderstand about your profession? Great question. Um, first of all, well, first of all, we're not only 
you know, back and neck doctors. So that, okay. you know, with that portion out of the way, um, the second thing, you know, you and I were talking about sometimes people are like nervous to go to the chiropractor. Mm -hmm. They don't really know what to expect. Yeah. So the way that I like to address that question is there are lots of different types of chiropractors. Mm -hmm. um, the way that, let's say, you know, if your brother-in-law lived in another state and you said, oh, what should he look for in a chiropractor? I would say, look for somebody who takes x-ray uh, x-rays whether in their office or recommends you take x-rays and then they go over the x-ray with you mm, so okay. a lot of times patients uh will go get a referral for like an mri or for an x-ray and then they're never uh given an explanation to what's going on like a really caring chiropractor will go over that with you and they'll talk to you about what what's going on um another thing is you know there should be a strong philosophy for each doctor right like i became a chiropractor because i believe in the chiropractic philosophy it's like mm -hmm. you know if i was trying to talk about something else if i was trying to you know change industries and started talking to you about you know finance it's like well there's a there's a disconnection it's like yeah. your chiropractor should really love chiropractic yes <laughs> you want to like feel that passion come out of them that that right. is what they're right. brain into and that's what they believe in definitely okay <laughs> what are you curious about right now in the medical sector or the holistic center sector right now well i'm i'm curious to see so here in la i've been hearing about a lot of these kind of like um wellness like wellness facilities i'm gonna call them like a almost like um like a country club of wellness okay. professionals so there's like uh you know a person that does breath work there's a person that does acupuncture there's a person that does maybe like talk therapy there's chiropractic all these different types of like wellness professionals all under one roof mm -hmm. i wonder how how those types of practices are able to really like show show people that you you need multiple you know you need a team of people sometimes when yeah. when you're looking for help when you're looking for a solution it's like sometimes you need a team of people i wonder how popular that business model is going to get and if it does then good i'm excited <laughs> yeah i i've been hearing about that as well i think kind of like chiropractic and acupuncture they're covered by insurance but they're still mm -hmm. Kind of in that that bridge over to western i right. feel like that part that we're talking about mm -hmm. the wellness centers i feel like once they're accepted by insurances mm -hmm. they'll start coming over a little bit but there's still going <laughs> to be education and yeah. it's going to yeah. take a little bit because some of the stuff at the wellness centers it's outside of a ton of people's comfort zone let alone right. like doing just what I find to be normal, which is chiropractor and acupuncture. Yeah. <laughs> but I know that's not normal for a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. I'm curious to see how popular that kind of business model becomes so that maybe it'll transfer over to smaller cities or to people that, you know, you're right, that aren't familiar with that kind of a lifestyle. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, think about working out. Yeah you know, 30 years ago, only bodybuilders worked out. Yeah. And now it's like, you know, even my mom works out. She's 65 years old. She goes to a gym. It's like, yes. what was normal before maybe was not common. And what's, what's common and normal now has completely changed. Yeah, definitely. My dad's 70. Gosh, my dad's almost 80 and he works out. So but he's working Great. way too, way too long. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's trying to ride bikes for 50 miles. I was oh like, my goodness. Wow. About you. <laughs> I'm sure he loves it. <laughs> he does. Um, okay. So this is going to be a, just a random question just to get to know you. What was your first job after college? <laughs> I had some random, random jobs. My first <laughs> job after college was, I was an admissions counselor for a college. So I would like help people enroll and get through their first class in college. 
Okay, <laughs> and I know that students need that, definitely. They need to be right. guided a little bit to, you know, corralled a little bit. Okay, well, that was really yeah. helpful. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty random, but um, I it prepared me to be a chiropractor because I talked to so many people, like so many different types of people, um, and I help them through a you know weird stage in life sometimes. <laughs> yeah, definitely the eighteen to gosh twenty something age yeah. is a it's a tough area to move through sometimes. Well, gosh, it was like eighteen to like sixty. Some of my really? some of the people that were enrolling into college, yeah, they were like you know fifties, sixties years old. Yeah, <laughs> I kind of love seeing the older people in college just because right. like, that takes some courage to really step out of your comfort zone and be like, I'm going back to college with all these 20 year olds. I'm going to go back. Absolutely. Yeah. So I, I wanted I like to talk to you. Vulnerability. <laughs> yes. They're vulnerable. They're vulnerable. Yeah. They totally just own it. Cause they can't pretend like they're in their twenties. They're just like, right. yeah, I'm here. <laughs> um, let's see. So I want to talk to you a little bit about the cold laser therapy. I read about that a little bit on the website. Can you tell me just a little bit about that? Yes, yeah, so cold laser therapy is great because it stimulates the mitochondria, which is powerhouse of the cell, yes. uh, to basically regrow. If, if, if tissue is damaged, if tissue has been very, very inflamed to the point where it's now damaged, you need new tissue to grow in that place. And the way that happens is by stimulating the area, stimulating the mitochondria. And so now this new healthy tissue can grow. So cold laser is pretty unique in the sense that it's cold. You don't feel it. Yeah. Like there's a very common laser called K laser, but it gets hot. And if you like stuck the laser in one spot, it would get hot. You could burn your skin, but cold laser uh, you don't feel it at all. So you could literally do cold laser on, you know, any part of your body and it would basically regenerate the tissue and it wouldn't be painful. You wouldn't feel it at all. Okay. And do you, does insurance cover that? Is that something that you- A lot of them do, yes. They yeah. do? And mm -hmm. how long are those sessions usually? Do you know? They're always different depending oh. on what you need them for. Like some people use them on their varicose veins. That's usually really? about like, yeah, like 15 minutes. Really? You know, I use it on my elbow because I've had tennis elbow. I use it for 10 minutes, you know, um, all, or like an acute injury. It's only, you know, five minutes at a time. You know, I would never have thought varicose veins. Like that just blew me away. The, yeah. the cold laser therapy helps with that? Oh yeah, we have helped people not have surgery or at least not have pain anymore from the varicose veins from cold laser. <laughs> oh, wow, okay. Well, that's interesting. I didn't know that. So I'm imagining cold laser therapy, you would work a lot with physical therapists. They would come, they would send their patients to you, right? There's definitely a... Uh, team there, like physical therapy and chiropractic. Um, a lot of times people go to physical therapy as uh, like a recommendation from a medical doctor. Like, let's say if you wanted to use your insurance, yeah, you go to the medical doctor and then they would recommend you to physical therapy and then your insurance uh, would cover that, hopefully. A lot of times with chiropractic, you, you you like cut out the middleman, you just go straight to the chiropractor. Like yeah. you never ne you never needed the referral for physical therapy or you never needed the referral from a medical doctor. So a lot of times um, we're, we are their only provider, like we're their only doctor. Whether, yeah. you know, whether or not uh, they choose to go to, you know, like a physical therapist or an acupuncturist, we're all for it, but a lot of times, they come in to see us and we help them so much that they don't have to go anywhere else. I think a lot of people don't realize that their insurance covers chiropractor and acupuncture because right. even on, I, ha I think I have like one of the main companies in America mm -hmm. and I know I have coverage, but it doesn't really say it anywhere on my card. I have to call right. in and, and verify what I'm covered. And I do have chiropractic and acupuncture. So that's maybe awesome. That's that may be why some people think they have to pay out of pocket mm -hmm. for that. Yeah, and also a lot of times uh, people don't even choose their insurance. They just kind of like, this is what my company offered. 
and they just choose it off of you know price or yeah they, they don't do a lot of like background research to it so uh, insurance covers a lot that's for sure yeah it does <laughs> i'm super happy about with my insurance nice let's see nice. <laughs> do you think is there anything because I've had chiropractic visits. I don't even know how many I've had, but I've definitely had them. Is there anything that I that I didn't ask you that I should have asked you that I don't know to ask you? <laughs> Do you know what I mean about chiropractor? Like, is there anything that pops out? You're like, maybe I should um, say something about this, and I didn't know to ask. Okay, so you could always ask the chiropractor or me or whatever why are you adjusting me where you are? You know, like what is, what is this adjustment going to do to help? Me? That's, um, that's one common thing that people come into our office and I say, have you been to the chiropractor? And they say, yes. And I'm like, do you know what chiropractors do? And they say, no, <laughs> no. because you know, um, they, they don't get like a very, they don't get an explanation sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> I've been to the chiropractor's offices before that it feels like I'm kind of just getting herded in when just herded out. <laughs> oh no. Need right. any explanation of just like, it feels like, you know, when you go to the mall and there's people there to massage you, that's how it felt at some <laughs> chiropractic offices that when I was coming in, it felt like I was going into one of those places and I wasn't. Yeah. Yeah. See what we were talking about before there did different types of chiropractors, different types yeah. of chiropractic offices. Yes. Um, I can tell you the offices that I've been to, that I've worked at, that I've gone, you know, have friends that they open their own office. It's, you'll know when you're in a good chiropractic office yes. because you're not being just like run through the mill. Like, yes. okay, see you, see you next week. It's like, you want to feel that you're healing, right? Um, yeah. That's that's a big part of it. it. That's a big part of chiropractic is like helping you feel better, and, yeah. and you know to feel that you're getting pushed through the line. That that doesn't make anybody no. feel. Better. I was really <laughs> young when I first experienced that, and I've learned my lesson. So I review and I look a little bit closer, and I make sure that I'm actually getting spoken to by the staff a little bit longer right. than maybe eight minutes. So right, it works right, right. good, but it's yeah. common for any visit with a physician that you want a little bit of time with them. Right, right. Gosh, I know the very first few chiropractors I ever went to in high school, I never knew what they were, what they were doing to help me. Yeah. I just knew that I felt better afterwards. Yeah. Like in my office and in, you know, a lot of people that share my philosophy, we want you to know exactly what's going on so that you have you play a role in, you know, in your healing. So, uh, yeah, just like the clarity makes a big point. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> okay. Let's see what else. So this is a good one. It's another random question. I love this. Okay. One. What's the best compliment you ever received? The best compliment. Oh, well, this is very random. I love it when people tell me that they like the music that I'm playing. <laughs> really? <laughs> Absolutely. Because I, really? you know, music plays a huge role in my life. So I, I appreciate that people recognize that I like good music. <laughs> what type of music do you like? That's, I've, I've never heard that before. What really? you like? That's funny. I listen to a lot of oldies. Like I listen to like Motown. I listen to like, Ray Charles. I really like the Temptations. Like, I'm basically anything that was like created way before I was born. I like. Yes, that. definitely. You're all, <laughs> I love that era. It's before me, but I love it. Yeah. Okay, that's unique. I, I didn't expect that. <laughs> all right, let's see. Uh, let's see. Oh, one more question. Mm -hmm. What does wellness mean to you? Okay, wellness means that you are prepared for any type of illness or injury or you know um, unhealthy type of thing to happen to you so wellness doesn't happen overnight it, wellness is something that you keep up with 
as part of your lifestyle so that you don't have to be worried when you sprain your ankle or you don't have to be worried when you get the flu because you know that your body is so strong that it's able to heal. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense to me because I see people that are not well and mm-hmm. when they get sick, they get, they get really, really sick and right. for them right. to bounce back. Definitely. Because that worry, that fear, that kind of uncertainty, it, it makes it worse. You know, it makes injuries worse. It makes illness worse. So um, knowing that your body is well, knowing that you're healthy or, and that you have the ability to heal, it plays a huge role. Yeah. And definitely if you know you have options and alternatives that you can seek out in order to help optimize your health. And yeah. I like to use Western and holistic simultaneously. Like I know I'm like, oh, oh, well, I'm going to go here. Because you, right. if I had avocado finger, you know what avocado finger is? Wow. Gosh. How long ago? Probably a year and a half ago. So there was okay. a cut right there. So I definitely had to get some sutures in there. So that's <laughs> definitely Western medicine right there for me. Right, right. I get it. I get it. <laughs> so you guys do um, like arm and wrist adjustments? Do you yeah. Do? Yes. You do. Yeah, definitely. So I played tennis my whole life. My wrists and my elbows and my shoulders, they need, they need a lot of love. So I definitely, I get them adjusted. I do soft tissue, do massage, all of those things. Really? Are you able to do those corrections on yourself? Not all of them. Um, I, I do do like soft tissue on myself, but to get adjusted, I, I call in my partner. <laughs> okay. Yes, definitely. Because are you able to adjust your like hands and arms? Yeah. Yeah. I can adjust like my own fingers and my wrist. Okay. All right. <laughs> well, do you, this is, this has been great for me. Like I've learned... I've learned a ton. This little this a lot. good thing, totally going to look into that. Awesome. I'm pregnant. I'm going to look into getting adjusted while pregnant. I never, I don't know why I never thought that, thought of that, but that totally makes sense. So I'm going right. to put on right. my list as well. And if you're in South Bay, I've got a great friend down there too on, um, I think on PCH. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And you guys, are you guys open right now? We are. We are open. We we never had to close down. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, yeah. We definitely have a different kind of protocol right now. Like, uh, you know, we're wearing gloves and masks when, when we're with patients. Uh, there's a fewer number of people that are like allowed to be in the office at a time, but we are open. Okay, I love that. That's good mm-hmm. to know. All right. Well, it was nice to have you. So and- nice to be here. Thank you. All right.